Chewy. Chewy. We got more fan mail. This is always exciting. Okay. <clears throat> Dear Matt, I've been following your channel for a while, and you've mentioned Pop in a Box more than once. I'm thinking of starting up my own Funko collection, and I was wondering, is getting a Pop in a Box subscription worth it? Please let me know. Sincerely, your biggest fan, Oprah. <laughs> well, Oprah, what a great question. One that I am prepared to answer. Welcome to Teacup for One. My name is Matt and I have two degrees. And before we get started with the main topic of today's video, I wanted to introduce a brand new game to the channel called Let's Take Five Seconds to Subscribe to the Channel if we haven't already subscribed. Go. And now that we played that fun game, let's get on to the main topic of discussion, which is Pop in a Box subscriptions. I've been a subscriber to Pop in a Box for just over a year now, and I thought it would be fun to do a video review about the products that I've received over the past year, just assessing the value and addressing the big question, is getting a Pop in a Box subscription worth it? Pop in a Box, for anyone who doesn't know, is a pretty great website. They have a website for a ton of countries internationally, and so thankfully there is one for Canada. And on the Pop in a Box website, you can either buy Funko products, specifically Funko Pops a la carte, especially the new releases. They're really great for the new common pop releases, but they're probably best known for their subscription pop boxes. The way the subscription service works is that when you sign up, you can choose to either have one, two, three, six, or 12 mystery Funko Pops sent to you per month. And of course, each plan comes with a different price point, and there are different savings that are associated with each plan. And you can decide what type of subscription box you want to receive. So there's the classic box where you just like, all the Funko Pops are a fair game. You could get anything. One month you could get like a Quentin Tarantino Funko Pop. The next month you could get a Care Bear, probably or you can pick a subscription box that's focused on a specific line. So like the movies subscription box where you just get Funko Pops that are movie characters or the TV box where you just get TV characters or you can get a subscription box that's focused on a specific franchise. So there's one for Star Wars, there's one for Marvel, there's one for DC, Game of Thrones and Disney. So no surprise here, obviously I'm signed up for the Disney subscription box. And there are a lot of cool perks that come with being a Pop in a Box subscriber. For example, when you're a subscriber, you automatically get 10% off any regular purchase made on the Pop in a Box website. And the subscription boxes are based around the pricing for just regular common figures. But you always have the chance of receiving an exclusive figure in your subscription box or um, a Pop Rides or an oversized Pop. And you know, like I've said on the channel more than once, low stakes responsible gambling is so much fun. If you do want to subscribe, I'm actually going to leave a link in the video description down below. If you use my promo code when you sign up for a subscription, you'll get 10% off your first order. So pretty exciting. Do it. But actually, no, don't do it yet because you're probably asking yourself, Matt, that all sounds fine and dandy, but is it worth it? Well, I can't answer that question for you because I'm not you and I don't know what your priorities in life are. However, what I can do is reflect on my experiences as a Pop in a Box subscriber for over one year. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you the Pops. I'm gonna tell you what I paid for them. I'm gonna tell you what I would have paid for them if I had just bought them a la carte off the Pop in a Box website. And I am going to tell you their current going rate on the Pop price guide. If you're not familiar with the Pop price guide, you just need to download the Funko app. It's an amazing tool. Essentially, the Pop price guide just has a team of robots and humans, I think, that go across the internet and see what each individual Funko Pop is currently selling for, like between probably eBay, third-party resellers, maybe even Facebook Marketplace, I'm not sure. Anyway, it takes all those prices and it averages them out and lets you know what any given pop is currently worth. It's an incredible tool, especially if you're looking to buy or sell Funko Pops independently. 100% download the Funko app, familiarize yourself with the pop price guide because that's kind of the standard for buying and selling Funko Pops right now. So without further ado, Let's look at my collection. And before we get going, some essential information. 
I'm subscribed just to receive one Disney Funko Pop per month. The price that I'm paying is $14.95, which is what Pop in a Box charges for a standard common Funko Pop, plus shipping, which is $4.99. So every month I am charged four, no, not 14, math. So every month I am charged $19.94. Good year. Oh, and I'm also gonna show you pictures that I took of these Funko Pops and you know, no pressure, but please follow me on Instagram. Thank you. The first ever Funko Pop I received in my Disney subscription box was the Pop in a Box exclusive Pinocchio with Jiminy Cricket. And this is just, this is a really cool figure. What I love about him, well, there's so much I love about him. But first of all, this is the only Funko Pop so far where we have Pinocchio with his outstretched liar liar pants on fire nose. And he got the little Jiminy Cricket right at the end of the nose. And I just, I think this is hilarious and adorable because with this figure, you get two pops for one. Jiminy Cricket is so tiny, but so detailed. He has a really unimpressed look on his face. This figure, a ton of fun. Now, because he's a pop in a box exclusive, if I had just bought him a la carte on the pop in a box site, he would have been $17.95 plus delivery fees, which would have come to uh, $22.94. And get this, his current going rate on the pop price guide, $39. Off to a strong start. Next, for month two, I received Pongo and Perdita from 101 Dalmatians. Now, this one was pretty exciting for a few reasons. Now, first of all, as we all know, I am a diehard cat person. So, there's no way I would have actually dropped the money to buy these figures for myself because I'm team cat all the way. But I secretly kind of wanted them, but I didn't want to pay full price. So this is a case where the subscription box really pays off. Now, not only are they a two pack, they're also a pop in a box exclusive. Now they're no longer available on the pop in a box website. So I'm not sure what they were actually selling for originally, but the current rate for two packs on pop in a box site is $23.95. So with shipping, not even counting that this is an exclusive, they would have sent me back around 28 to $29 or so. And their current going rate on the pop price guide is $43. And also quality control. There was a little bit of box damage just at the top of the box. It looks like it saw the business end of an X-Acto knife. I'm not super picky when it comes to box damage. Like as long as the box isn't crushed, I'm okay with it. But I know a lot of people are mint condition in the box collectors. So just something to keep in mind. Moving on. Month three, I received Ursula as Vanessa. Now this is one of those figures that like on her own she's really not super impressive. It's just a brunette in a purple dress holding a shell. But this is where the fandom really comes into play. Vanessa's a pretty darn obscure character so just seeing her represented as a Funko Pop for anyone who loves Little Mermaid is pretty darn exciting. Now because she's another Pop in a Box exclusive her shelf price was a little higher than that of a common Pop so to buy her at regular price including delivery she would have come to $22.94. Her current value on the Pop price guide is $15. So this is the first time we're kind of taking a loss if you're looking at this from that perspective. Month four we have Sad Quasimodo. And truth be told, I think this is one of my favorite pops to photograph. The expression in this little Funko Pop's face is beautiful. There's just so much emotion and agony in his little Funko Pop eyes. Anytime I take a picture of him, it just, it turns out beautifully. And that's mostly because of the pop, not so much because I'm a very talented photographer. Anyway, this is the first time in my subscription box that I received a standard common pop. So I broke even on his price up against what I paid for the subscription box, but his current value on the pop price guide, $6. Just classic Quasimodo, not being properly appreciated for what he is worth. Month five, I feel like Pop in a Box was kind of running with a theme because I received Happy Quasimodo, or Fool Quasimodo. So this is Quasimodo in his Festival of Fools, King of Fool costume. So he's got this beautiful crown, he's wearing his cape, his like physicality is a lot more open, he's smiling, it's beautiful. Like Sad Quasimodo, he's priced for a common pop, so I broke even on the subscription box, and his current PPG pricing, $10. Which just goes to show that happiness is worth more than sadness. Moving on. Month five, we received Ariel, but not just any Ariel, awkward Ariel. 
That's what I'm going to call her, because this is Ariel from the very last scene of The Little Mermaid when King Triton, like, turns her into a human without making her sign away her soul, and then she just emerges majestically from the water, like, really stiff and awkwardly holding her arms out, like, huh? Just like that. Anyway, that classic awkward piece of animation has been immortalized as a Funko Pop. Not gonna lie, a little disappointed that the dress isn't glittery, which I think is kind of a common complaint with this figure, but the sparkly version of this pop is an exclusive to some place that is not pop in a box, so instead we're left with a pretty plain looking purple dress. So, like, I don't love the figure, but it's still a fun one to have in the collection. I appreciate it because it is part of the Little Mermaid 30th anniversary collection, so that's pretty exciting. Now, like the two Quasimodos, she is priced for a common pop figure, so we broke even there, and her PPG value is $11. Okay, now this is an interesting point, just to stop, pause, and reflect, because the first three months of the subscription, we received all Pop in a Box exclusive figures, then they moved us on to the common figures. Was it a coincidence? I don't know. If you look at the evidence, it kind of looks like one of those situations where they start you off on the really solid products and then just kind of gradually transition you to the okay products. But I'm not really complaining because, like I said, I really love these common figures. Well, I really love these common figures, so, so far, I'm happy in my subscription. Now, I follow a lot of other Pop in a Box subscribers on Instagram and on YouTube, so once we hit month seven of my subscription, I can't remember what calendar month it was, but once we hit around month seven, I started to see all these other Pop in a Box subscribers posting about how they were receiving really incredible figures, either 10 inch figures or Pop Ride figures. So I had my hopes set pretty high that I was gonna be sent something out of this world. And boy was I right. <laughs> I got the Alien Remix Woody. Like, this is... <laughs> this figure will never not make me laugh. And this just exemplifies for me the joy of having a Pop in a Box subscription because there is no way I would ever put down <laughs> money to buy this at full price, but I love having him in my collection. This is a 10 inch pop, so to buy him off the Pop in a Box website would have cost me $46.95 and his current PPG value is $26. So we kind of made some money off of this guy, kind of made a loss, is it gonna... It worked. Now, I went into month eight of my subscription thinking, well, last month they sent me a giant Woody, so there's no way they're gonna send me another oversized pop this month, right? Wrong. Enter 10 inch Jack Skellington. Like, this is amazing. To get this right after the Alien Remix pop, that was extra exciting. The only thing is that I'm not personally a Nightmare Before Christmas collector. I hadn't even seen the movie at the time I received this pop. And this is probably a good time to point out that when you do subscribe to a Pop in the Box subscription, you have the option of going through their inventory on the website and specifying which pops you want with a thumbs up and which pops you do not want with a thumbs down. I had gone through and I thumbs down most of the Nightmare Before Christmas characters, but I couldn't resist the possibility of getting this figure just because it's a 10 inch pop and those are really cool. But as far as I'm concerned, this is an adorable zero Funko pop with a sidekick. Anyway, because this is also a 10 inch pop, his price after delivery would have come to $46.95 and his current rate on the PPG, $48. Going into month nine after receiving two 10 inch pops, what could possibly top that? Buzz Lightyear as Mrs. Nesbitt. I just think this pop is hilarious. Like the arm is a completely detached piece from the actual pop because of course, when Buzz is dressed up as Mrs. Nesbitt, his arm has been broken off. He's having his whole like midlife toy identity crisis. The arm is holding the teapot and it's actually impossible to look at this figure without hearing Tim Allen's voice going, I am Mrs. Nesbitt. It's hilarious. This is another figure that's priced for common pop pricing, but its PPG value, $16. Nothing to scoff at, dearie, nothing to scoff at.
Now, going into month 10, there's a very strong possibility that this was my favorite pop out of my entire first year of being a subscriber. And there's nothing extra special about her, but I feel like when you sign up for a Pop in a Box subscription, there are certain figures just in the back of your mind that you're really hoping to get. And I received this figure just a couple days before Halloween, and I was really hoping to add Minnie Mouse as a witch to my collection. Some kind of Halloween witchcraft magic happened, and I got her. The color scheme is a lot more artistic and stylized than what you normally see with Funko Pops. I think Minnie, the sculpt of the figure herself, is adorable. She's flying on a broom, which is a, like fantastic. She has a cute little tail. Love it. Now, she's priced for a common pop, so nothing special there. Her current value on the PPG is $14, so again, nothing super special there, but I think she might be my favorite. Okay, moving into month 11. Not gonna lie, I kind of predicted that this pop was going to end up in my subscription box eventually. Because the big thing I learned towards the first few months of my subscription was that if there is a pop in a box exclusive figure that pertains to the franchise you're subscribed to, that figure is probably going to end up in your subscription box eventually. And of course, the big pop in a box exclusive Disney figure that released towards the end of last year was Chip Blowing Bubbles. Now. Obviously, I was going to get this for myself because it's a teacup and it's adorable. So like it fits the teacup for one brand perfectly. But it was really nice getting this figure in my subscription box because if I just bought him on the site a la carte, I would have had to pay the price for an exclusive, which $17.95 plus delivery, like $22.94, I think, math. I don't know. The point is, I wanted this figure, got him in my subscription box, and he was cheaper than I would have paid otherwise. So as far as I'm concerned, that's a win. And last, but certainly not least, the 12th and final figure from my first year as a Pomp in a Box Disney subscriber, Joel Gardner as a soul from Disney Pixar's Soul. The timing for this figure actually worked out kind of perfectly because I received him in the first week or two of January, right after I had just seen Soul on Disney+. Plus. So the movie was still fresh in my mind, but I didn't realize how beautiful the character designs for these figures truly were until I actually got the pop. Like the color gradient on him is gorgeous. I think this is an A-plus figure, so I was very happy to add this to the collection. He's priced as a common pop, so I broke even on him like I did with most, and these figures are still relatively new and a lot of them are in circulation, so his current value on the pop price guide is $9, but I'm pretty happy with it. So friends, there you have it. This is what one year of being a pop in a box Disney subscriber looks like. Okay, so for the people who like numbers, one year of being subscribed to Pop in a Box for a single figure cost me $239.28. Now, if I had bought all of these figures a la carte off the Pop in a Box website, it would have cost me $291.39. So, that's a savings of... Math, math, math. Oh wait, I have a calculator. Hold on. $52.00. And 11 cents. Okay, but let's be honest, the price that makes the biggest difference here is the value according to the Funko app or the Pop Price Guide, the PPG. So let's just say that I got all these Pops, never took them out of the boxes, never used them for photographs, and after a year of being a subscriber, wanted to sell off the entire lot according to their market value, according to the Funko app. <laughs> oh, I should have been a stockbroker. Anyway, the value for all 12 of them, according to the PPG, currently is $263. So, if I was able to sell all of them at their PPG pricing, and you factor in the amount I actually paid for them, I would turn a profit of $23.72. That's like the cost of a Funko. So, that brings us back to the question that really kicked off this entire video. Is a pop-in-a-box subscription worth it? And again, I'm going to give the same answer I gave at the beginning of the video. That all depends on your 
individual priorities as a pop collector. If you're somebody who's looking at a pop in a box subscription as a potential investment for acquiring figures that you can sell down the line and turn a little bit of a profit on, I feel like a subscription might not be the best bet. In that case, you'd probably be better off just to do a ton of research about the figures that are coming out and then figuring out the ways to get them at regular retail value, holding on to them for an indiscriminate amount of time and then just selling them at PPG value as those PPG values start to rise. But if you're somebody like me who's acquiring Funko Pops to build a collection as a reflection of the fandoms, the movies, the TV shows, and the characters that you genuinely love, I think a subscription is great. Like I said, these are figures and characters that I wouldn't have necessarily put out the time and the money to go look for myself but I love having them in my collection. And it's kind of a silly thing, but I really like getting mail. I think there's something really exciting about having that one thing to look forward to getting in the mail every month, having that little bit of a surprise and not knowing what figure you're going to get, and then eventually seeing how it fits on the shelf in your collection. But like most subscription boxes, it's gonna be right for some people and not right for others. And hopefully this video was helpful just in giving information to figure out if a pop in a box subscription is right for you. And again, if it is, feel free to check out the link in the description down below, use my promo code, get 10% off your first order. But for now, friends, this concludes yet another episode of Teacup 41. Let me know in the comment section down below, which of these 12 Funko Pops was your favorite? And I'm also curious, are you a pop in a box subscriber or have you ever been a pop in a box subscriber and what was that experience like for you and speaking of subscribers if you haven't subscribed to teacup for one yet that does not cost you a single cent it is the easiest thing in the world all you have to do is click on my face thanks for joining me again today everyone my name is matt and i have two degrees and that's the t cup for one Go away. <laughs> oh, good times.